Let's face it, the Nintendo 64 controller isn't the best controller. It's actually far from it. Maybe it's the awkward design that's off-putting to some people, but for most, it's the analog stick. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can 3D print new analog stick components and go from this to this. Let's get started. The inside of the stick has two arms that control movement along the X and Y axis. The problem is these controllers never came with any sort of lubrication on the plastics, and therefore they would wear down leaving a white powder residue that you often see. See this movement? That is all dead space just from wear alone. The stick sinks into the controller and to get a full range of motion you have to annoyingly lift up on the stick as you push it around, which you can see me doing here, making movement challenging. The files I will be using for this mod I've sourced from a Thingiverse post made by a user called Lman. There will be a link in the description below for the files if you wish to try this yourself. Here I am loading the files into Kira in the slicing program. To keep things simple, I'm printing components on a resolution of 0.1mm and 100% info. I should also address that I'm strategically orienting the components in such a way to get the most effective print. I'll get back to this later and you'll see why. So it's been two hours and I'm back to see how the prints turned out. Everything looks fine, but I noticed an issue with the arms. Because I printed them vertically, the plastic did not adhere the way I had wanted them to, so I reprinted them on their sides and on the top faces. The inside of the bowl is pretty rough and the stick won't be able to ride along as smoothly through binding or grinding it. So using a piece of sandpaper in the rear of a pair of pliers, I move the sandpaper in such a way that it evenly sands it smooths out the bowl. Just don't overdo it though. For this next part, I'm just filing and processing the parts so that they can work smoothly. After all that, next we can actually disassemble the controller. It also helps have a longer screwdriver or an extender so you can avoid stripping them as best as you can. Carefully remove these three screws holding the assembly in. I find the safest way to remove this connector here is to twist a flathead screwdriver between it to separate it avoiding damage. While holding the two sides of the assembly shell together, remove this black screw here. Gently pry these two tabs back and you'll heal an audible click. Next, slowly let the shells apart as it is spring loaded and you don't want anything to fly off. Here's the final product with all the 3D printed components assembled. I was amazed at how well it felt, and just by looking how the stick snaps back to center, you can tell it's made a massive improvement. Pretty much everything on my controller except for the bowl was in great shape, so I swapped everything out and then I left the 3D printed bowl in there. And honestly, it's indistinguishable from how it used to perform with the old OEM parts. I tested on an Ocarina of Time in Super Mario 64 and it played great. There's a full range of movement I could actually utilize, and the 3D printed stick itself offers so much more grip. I 
I compared this modded stick to my two other controllers. I have this grey one here with a fair amount of wear on the stick, and this red one here with pretty much just wear on the left and right. So, my verdict, can I recommend you doing this mod? Absolutely! For the cost of virtually nothing and some of your time, you can restore your old N64 controllers no matter how far gone the stick is. Playing games with this new stick is so much better. My printer isn't by any means bewildering, so if you have one at home and a few controllers need needed some love, you gotta give it a try. That's all for now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with some of your friends. Well, until next time.